Hey, what's going on, family? This is Tariq Nasheed, and I'm out here in the beautiful city of Washington, D.C., and I want you to join me this June 15th, 2024, for the Rally for Reparations Juneteenth celebration right here in Freedom Plaza. We came here to Freedom Plaza a few years ago. We turned up, turned out. It was a phenomenal event, and we're coming back to do it again, and we want to see you here. This year, we're going to have so many phenomenal speakers. We're going to have me hosting. We're going to have Brother Reza Islam, Sister Vicki Dillard, Greg Marcel Dixon, Black Alpha, Afro Elite, Dr. Randy Short, Dr. Mayotte, and a very special music performance by hip hop legend Big Daddy Kane. So family, you do not want to miss this. Come enjoy your foundational Black American heritage and celebrate it at the Rally for Reparations right here, Juneteenth celebration. For more information, go to rallyforreparations.com. That's rallyforreparations.com. We will see you here. Good, Ani. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, man. These tethers mm -hmm. are out of control, man. I don't know if you've seen seeing this story with uh, Michael Rainey Jr. The, oh uh, man, yeah. Oh man, I know you got to go in on that, but that gentleman, he is Jamaican, so his sister is Jamaican. That's so. what I thought. That's mm -hmm. what I thought. Do, mm -hmm. do y'all have proof of that? Because his him mm -hmm. talking, he talking. I, I can hear that. It, he, it sounds like a Brooklyn Jamaican accent. You know? Yeah, he, so, he's, he's, he's Jamaican. Him, Dez, is Jamaican. I think Kai Sanat and the other guy. Yeah, Kai's uh, like Haitian and Jamaican. Yeah, yeah I know Kai yeah. is great. Yeah, they all hang out together. So you already know, brother. Just wanted yeah. to let you know about that. Yes, um, I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you so much, brother. But yeah, for those who don't know, I'm going to get you in a second, Terrain. So Michael Rainey. And Michael Rainey, he's Jamaican too, by the way. Michael Rainey. I think his mom is Jamaican. So uh, Michael Rainey from, um, he plays Tariq on Power. They were on this live stream of this YouTuber, this streamer, guy named um, Ty Lil, Ty Lil James. And he's one of these young kids, you know, they do these streams and they get a lot of, you know, these guys, they got a lot of views. And um, the dude's sister was kind of groping Michael Rainey. And he was like real uncomfortable and he was covering his genitals. His old thirsty ass big back sister was just, and, and this was on, they were all on camera. They were in the background and she's like trying to come on to the dude, just real creep squad type shit, dude. She's trying to rub his genitals on the, on the low low and he's like hella uncomfortable. And then he ended up, he bounced. So the the Thai guy, Thai Thai little guy, whoever his name is, he kind of had to apologize. Yeah, I'm sorry for my sister or what she did. And Michael Rainey put out a statement like, "Oh man, that wasn't cool. You know, I, I felt a certain way." Whoop de whoop. It was real weird and creepy. But I, seeing that, I'm like, that's that. Uh, I knew something was was off with that. I'm like, these these they don't they don't look like FBAs. The way they getting down, they uh, FBA women ain't that damn thirsty. You dig? And it was a real weird vibe. A lot, of these things, they, 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 a lot of these cats are weird out here, man. A lot of this little weird stuff that goes on with these streamers and their families. Weird stuff. But, um, yeah, that, that looked real janky. And I, I had a feeling it was some non-FBA stuff. Brother Terrain, hop in, sir. Brother Tariq, how you doing this Good, evening, man, bro? How are you, my brother? I'm good, man. I had to come off my Twitter break, man. I took a, I was taking a social media break this month, but I had to come in and check you oh, out, yeah. brother. Now, what, what made you want to take a break? Honestly, man, um, I realized that a lot of I'm actually working on a couple of projects and social media sometimes can suck you in and have you giving up free game to people that you could be putting into your own work. So I had to step back from it and stuff. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? I, I completely understand that. Yes, indeed. Completely. So how you living, man? How you doing good over there, brother? Yeah, brother, I'm doing good, man. I'm just putting in a lot of late nights, which is I noticed you do your stuff like it's uh, almost three o'clock. It's two o'clock on the East Coast. So, yeah, I just want to check you out. But um, I wanted to I wanted to speak about this real quick. Yes. Um, on the purpose of on, on gatekeeping, I've been a huge advocate of African of black Americans gatekeeping for the longest yeah. now. And I think it's starting to finally seep in because. Every other culture, even if they interact with the larger culture or even if they're selling some of their culture to white culture, 
they have a baseline that they do not cross and they have certain things that they keep within their culture that they monetize for themselves. Yes. We don't do that. We sell everything and we let gate and we let a lot of interlopers and I like to call them carpet baggers come into our culture and then they end up capitalizing off the stuff that we build and we still end up left holding the bag. That happens all the time in our culture. It didn't used to, but I think finally some of the younger people are starting to wake up to that and some of the older people are too. And except, and you know, look, we live in a capitalist society. There's no way around that. But if you sell everything that you make and you don't do any, get, and you don't demand anything in return and you don't demand respect in return, you're just going to end up becoming a commodity and you're not going to have anything. And that's what I wanted yes, to say. Indeed, man, I thank you so much and appreciate you, brother. All right, brother Terrain in the building. Yes, indeed, man. We got to stop giving away our stuff, man. We give away way too much. We give away way too much of our um, cultural capital. We got to chill out on that. Shout out to everybody in the room. We got a lot of people in here in the middle of the night. Some of y'all, y'all kids getting ready to get out of school. Some of y'all, this is like the last week for your kids to be in school. So um, it's about to be on for the summer. Y'all going to have them badass kids running around the house. So y'all better get ready. Y'all better get ready and bring them, bring them kids on out to the rally for reparations in DC next Saturday. School is out. Y'all hop on a, get that car trip going Friday. Come on, make it, make it a weekend. Get the car trip going, especially if you're out there on the East coast, if you're in Philly, um, Baltimore, the DMV, um, North Carolina, South Carolina, um, all of those areas, y'all drive on up carpool and come on out and enjoy the family at the Rally for Reparations this Saturday in Washington, D.C. A few more days left. Let's get Combo Visionary. Combo Visionary in the building. What's going on, Combo Visionary? All right, Combo ain't saying nothing. And let's get um, Max Slug. Let's get Max Slug in the building. Mr. Max Slug in the building. I'm good, Max Slug. How are you, sir? Oh, man. All right, man. I just wanted to tap in and, be, and let you know I got my copy of Microphone Chat. Oh, my man. I appreciate that. I yeah, appreciate man. You in, by the way, brother? What'd you say? What city are you in? Oh, man. I'm in Seattle. Oh, shout out to Seattle. I got to get up to there to Seattle. What's the vibe up in Seattle now? Oh man, right now, you know, they, they uh, you know, we we still around a lot of the black folks. We still in the community, the central district where I'm from. Uh, you know, they they doing that uh, you know how they get us up out the neighborhood, but I mean, but it's a cool vibe, especially when it's summertime. We got the June June 19th festival coming up. So so we got a lot of, you know, things going on in the summertime at this moment. But yeah, okay. we usually, you, when you usually do your movie up here, though, you know, I used to always go there and take a picture. I remember somebody was saying about the posters at the spot where you usually have the movie at. Yeah, they they be they used to hide the posters or whatnot uh, yeah. at the spots. So, but yeah, but usually, you know, when um when you have your mu movies up here, we usually uh come hella deep, you know, the FBA, the brothers and sisters, and support the, you know support the movie. Yes, indeed, man. Appreciate that, Max. Look, and shout out to everybody up there in um, Seattle. All right, Combo, you good? Your brother Combo, you good? All right, let me get you out of here. All right, let's get um, Patrick Reeds. I think I've had him on before. Patrick, what's going on, Patrick? I, I wanted to... Bust on the Latin guy, but I was going to tell you about these tethers that I've been trying to warboard uh, recently. Uh, you know, but can I bust on the Indian guy first? No, no. What happened now? The, the Latin Indian guy who just came up here that was like super retarded. Uh, well, he's like, all right. He was, the Indian guy was cool. Why are you going in on the Indian guy? He was all uh, right because he's like a Pajit Arabian knight, like a retarded Aladdin. Like he's like the type of Indian that lays on hot coals and stands now on the spikes. Now why? Why are you going in on the guy? He didn't do anything. Why are you going in on the guy? Because you know he plays the recorded earthworms, not flutes to snakes. 
you know, he works at like a floppy disk support center with rotary phones. He's like that type of guy. You know what I mean? Well, he could he could say something about you. He can say that you're living in a trailer drinking out of a mayonnaise jar. I mean, he can say that about you, sir. So you don't want that. That's fine, but he wasn't smart enough to. I was going to talk about like trying to warlord these tethers you call. Like I've been trying to like uh, gather these Nigerian orphans that seen their fathers like be lit on fire, fire with a tire uh, to like revolt against UFBA guys. Uh, I give them like John Claude Van Damme T-shirts, red Adidas track pants, like LA gear, light up shoes, like you know Sony boomboxes, D-sized batteries. But that's all you got. Well, you, well, you got to do a lot to get rid of um, get rid of um, black folks. That's a lot. A lot of energy you got to put uh, put out. Yeah, a lot of so energy. it's super hard. And, right? and you know how does that feel? How does that feel? You got to exert so much energy to kind of get rid of black people, and all a black guy has to do is bang a white woman, and bam, you gone. So how does that? Oh no shit! Right? Like there's like a super right. awesome big black dick and a fucking shortage of uh, women right. who don't want big black all dick. The got you there. All a brother got to do is, is smash one of them Beckys, and bam, them them black bloodline is right there, conquered, right there, conquering the game. But they don't know I, that, right? Like the, right. the, the tethers, like because they like never forget the hunger. So I've I've been telling them they're hungry because all you guys, the FBA guys in America, uh, stole all their golds and right. eating all of it. So that's and why you guys have gold tooths. Some of the, they really want to destroy of, you and eat your tooths. And, and and some of the Beckys are hungry for soul pole, right? Then Becky's are hungry for that soul pole, aren't they? Dude, it's hard, right? I know. Like it's like a struggle for us men. Like these the 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 tethers are what you call these Nigerians, they think you're supposed to eat gold because they're so hungry. So even with that, like uh, you know, even if I convince them that you stole all their gold because their teeth be gold and they want to eat your tooths, like they don't do anything. Oh wow, okay. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to give them some material. The white supremacists are the, the most unwitty people. I mean, just a just a, a hodgepodge of unfunny trolling. And I'm trying to throw him a bone, like yeah, I'm throwing some comedy at so that you can latch on to it and try to at least be a little funny. But like, hey, oh, you know, the Nigerians they had goat teeth, dude. <laughs> just, damn, no wonder you're in a trailer with a blow up doll with a Justin Bieber picture taped to the blow up doll because he's very moist. Miss um, Sweets, what's up, dear? Hello, how you doing? I'm good, beloved. What, what city are you calling from, Miss Sweets? I'm calling from Atlanta. Oh, oh, down there in Atlanta. Yes, what well, you, really, really Decatur, because Decatur wears greater. Oh, uh, yeah, you know what you do down in Atlanta. You're a hairdresser. <laughs> what do you do? Well, I, I do all kinds of things. I do radio and oh. TV broadcasting. Um, I do PR. Uh, I do all, all kinds of things. Okay, there it is. But so what's, what your favorite, I, what's your favorite thing to do down there? My favorite thing to do down here is TV broadcasting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. I report. I report on the news. I report. I report to us. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't really, we don't speak to the black family all the time. And you know, mainstream media, of course, they don't cover everything for us. So I started a uh, show. It's called the ATL Press. It's on HHN TV. Um, and I just speak about uh, everything that's happening to us in our community to us so that we are aware of what's going on. So yeah, that's what I enjoy doing. How long you been out there in Atlanta? Oh wow. I I got out here in two thousand four actually. From the um, Midwest. So... What part of the Midwest you from? <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> I, I know I know FBA accents. Man. Okay. <laughs> Ohio somewhere. Where are you from? Ohio, St. Louis, where are you uh, from? Oh Chicago. Chicago. I know somewhere in the Midwest. Yes, yes indeed. Shottown. Who you with? Yes indeed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are you coming to D.C. Saturday to the rally for reparations? Yes, we will be there. Yeah, who is we? Me and my fiancé will be there. Uh-oh, where's your fiancé? He, well, he's actually, he's in Decatur also, okay. um, but he's from Brooklyn, New York. There you go. Um, he's bro from Brooklyn. He's FBA or Jamaican? A lot of Jamaicans in Brooklyn. He's FBA, but he's also, he's got a little Puerto Rico in the mix. Okay, there it is. Absolutely. Uh, how long y'all been engaged? Um, we've been engaged for two years now. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's a kind of a long engagement. How come y'all ain't it's, jumping in the damn room? Or, it's, or not, it's, not, it's not really a long engagement. And I, and I say that because you, they are just different factors. Like, I'm not in a rush to get married only because I'm not the divorcee type. So we're going to be together. Like, we're we not getting divorced. So right. once we do this, you know, I just want to make sure that we're strong and the foundation, you know, is is laid the way it's supposed to be laid. Now so we're gonna make it happen. Okay, okay. Do you have children? 
I do not. Okay. Does he have kids? He does. Okay. How many he have? He has three. Three. Okay. Yeah. Now, how old are you, by the way? I'm sorry. What's the question? How, how old are you? I'm 45. 45? Yes. Okay. And, and how old is he? Look, for, 45 young, and he's 38. Okay. I'm looking at your, your page right now. Is he, now are you the one with the, you went to the microphone check screening. You got the Afro puffs? Yes, that's me. Okay. Oh, you look fine thing. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I do my thing. I do my thing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yes, yes. That 45 is holding up real good. It okay. is. Yes, I'm holding on to my youth real tight. Yeah. I'm yeah. like you. <laughs> yeah, you do not look 45, sir. No, I don't. And that's crazy. And people, they don't believe me yet. They still card me. Yes, indeed. And Absolutely. Yeah, so what, you you must be vegan or something. You seem like you eat real well. I'm not vegan, but I, I have been pescatarian. Um, I lost my pescatarian streak. I was pescatarian for a couple years. Okay. And then uh, my fiance, he made some barbecue chicken one day. <laughs> and he was <laughs> like, babe, you got to try this chicken. And I was like, stop teasing me. And he was like, just take a bite. And I took a bite and it messed it all up. It just broke your spirit. Yeah, my lady <laughs> doing that type of shit. I tried to do the whole thing. <laughs> I was going to go a whole month without eating meat, and she fucked around and made some sloppy joes. I said, fuck <laughs> all that. Fuck a, fuck a vegetable. Man. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get some of that. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm going to get back eating correctly. But, yeah, yeah I, I fell off for a little while. But I do I do exercise, and I, I advocate for no stress. So yeah. try not to, you know, keep your keep your uh your forehead, keep those wrinkles out your forehead, keep oh, a yeah. smile on your face, and that's how you stay looking young. That's my oh, yeah. advice. Yes, ma'am. You know, absolutely. But I did there. Uh, I I do want to touch on something before we get off, um, because I also want to say congratulations on the film microphone check. I truly enjoyed it. We had a great time. Yes. Um, there, there were two ladies that did get into it before the film what, started. What was that? Okay, um, okay, okay. Please explain. Okay, for those who don't know, in Atlanta, there was something that happened in Atlanta. I wasn't there. I, I was in a whole different city. But yes. I keep hearing there was an altercation with some lady at the theater. Yes. I don't know what happened. From what I, this is what I heard. There was some kind of argument. She was arguing with somebody and then they made her, the audience made her leave. So you, what, yes. you tell me what, what happened? What see, see what had happened was we were sitting in the theater, and right before the movie was getting ready to start, the uh the lady there was two ladies that were sitting on the end, and the lady was sitting in the front, and she had her children with her, and they went up to the concession stand to get some more snacks. So when they went up front to get some concessions, the lady behind her, I'm not sure where she was from, but apparently she was not FBA. But she started talking smack about the lady's children, like they were rowdy or something, but they really weren't because nobody was really loud in it. But okay. the lady behind her, she was acting like as if, you know, the kids. So she's talking about the lady kids. So the lady turned around. She was like, hey, I'm FBA all day. Like, we don't talk about people's children. Right, ladies, right. you know, she like, <laughs> so we all like, hey, we all supposed to be on code here. Like, what's the problem? And the lady, she started talking more. She like, oh, well, your kids this and this and that. So they just kept going back and forth, and, and the lady in the front, you know, she was like, we FBA, you know what I'm saying, we supposed to show love, this is what it is, we came here to watch the movie, and the lady behind her was just hating. So they ended up putting the lady behind her out, and then the movie was starting, and everybody was chilling, and then I guess Miss Lady that they put out, she started hating, so then the manager came back in, and they ended up taking the other lady and the children out of the theater, oh, wow. um, so they weren't able to finish watching the movie. Oh, but, yeah, it was it was it was a crazy start, but er everybody else was on code. I expected it to be at least one op while we were in there, so oh, yeah. it was to be expected. Wow! <laughs> wow. But it was a wonderful film. Everybody enjoyed it. As soon as the movie was over, everybody was you know what I'm saying we were applauding, giving claps, and the love was definitely in there. Um, but but to 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 continue to bounce off that fact um, of the love. That's the whole point of why I wanted to chime in um, tonight. I've just recently been seeing, even since um, the movie Microphone Check has dropped, that there is a lot of, um, of foreign entities, uh, we will say. I'm not going to point anyone out specifically, but there are a lot of foreign entities that are very hateful um, towards our movement. And, and they show it, unfortunately, 
And now uh, for, you know, for their per own personal reasons, they are labeling foundational black Americans as a hate group. And I would just like to clear the air for everyone that is listening. I don't know, pass this on to your cousins, your friends, your uncles, your aunties. We are not a hate group. And I don't understand why and even how we could be. They know that. Listen, a hate group they, they, three. Right. That, that's, th these are ops. That's like agents. Um, to try to redefine our lineage. Everybody knows when we talk about foundation of black Americans, we're talking about a lineage and they can't do a damn thing about people acknowledging their lineage. So what they have to do in order to attack our lineage, they have to try to pretend it's some kind of organization with leaders and memberships and all of that. So they have to concoct this cointel pro shit 101. And it's all in bad faith. The people telling that lie, they know that they're lying. You don't even have to dignify that lie. They know that they're telling a lie. They know that there's no hate group. There's no cult. Um, but we're dealing with lying tethers. So what else are lying tethers going to do except lie? So yeah, you don't even dignify that. Um, and it's a lot of projection, too. We got to understand, a lot of the tethers, these folks work with law enforcement. That's one of the deals. When the tethers come over with that anti-FBA mindset, white supremacists, they know how to co-opt them to work against us. It's not the other way around. See, they do a lot of projecting. You always hear tethers hopping in our rooms. You niggas are the new Cointel Pro. You niggas are working with the FBI to divide us. That's a, a major projection, which is number one, what the hell do you got going on that would need a COINTELPRO program to infiltrate it first? Let's just look at the logistics of that. What do you musty tethers got going on anywhere productive that would need an intervention from some damn COINTELPRO? You ain't got nothing popping. We're not going over there to where you are. We're not going over there. Y'all always up in our rooms. You're always following us around. You always all in our damn Kool-Aid. So if somebody's an agent, that would be you. You guys always showing up to our damn events and showing up to our spaces and message boards trying to sow discord. We don't go over there. We, we don't go over there to your homelands trying to infiltrate and undermine the people. There's nothing to undermine. Y'all don't really have anything going on over there. It would be pointless to do that. We go over there and we help. We go over there and say, hey, here's a couple of dollars. Um, get some toilet paper and some deodorant. You understand? We don't do all that stuff. But they damn sure do it to us. We get flooded with tethers. And the new thing, family, the, the tether class is trying to pretend to be FBA now. That's the thing. They, they're putting on hats. They're putting on headbands. And they're, they're really trying to blend in and then act shocked when we figure them out. They try to lie. Oh, no, nigga, I'm FBA too. They try to do some research. No, my grandmother was on a plantation in Valdosta, Georgia, nigga. No, you got an accent. No, that's Gullah Geechee. I'm a Gullah Geechee. No, that's not a Gullah Geechee accent, nigga. Stop it. So, yeah, we, we got a lot of finessing going on from the tether class. Avenge. Hop on, Avenge. What's up, brother Tariq? I'm good. Uh, Avenge, how are you, sir? No, I'm just sitting here tripping mad when the brother called up and asked you, why can't y'all hook up on the rep reparations rally? You said, fool, you ain't nothing. Who the hell are you? You ain't nobody. Be one, bro. Keep up the good work. My man, um, I'm trying to remember when I said that. Okay. I'm trying to remember when that happened. I talked to so many people, so I don't know. Let's get... um. Empress Enchanted in the building. Empress Enchanted. All right. And then we get Z-Rex. Empress Enchanted. Good evening. How are you doing, Tariq? Hey, Empress. How are you, dear? I am wonderful, sir. So I'm excited to see everybody this week in D.C. Yeah. Yes, I cannot wait. It's going to be a phenomenal event Saturday. 
it's going to be dope this weekend. And I was just coming up here to agree with you. She make it a whole family event. You know what I mean? Tariq, yeah. I do a tour of Black Broadway. So on Friday and Sunday, um, people, I have seats left over so people can come and take my tour. Uh, it's well, pretty what dope. city you in, dear? I'm in D.C. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, listen, listen. What's your... um? Do you have any contact information? Because there's another brother from D.C. who is in here. Brother, are you in here? The other brother from D.C. who's who knows everything out there? Because we would like to have you guys. I would just like to have people kind of get in touch with you for just some advice on where to if they need to stay somewhere or where to eat or all of that. Where, all of that stuff. I, I I would like for them to have some contacts out there in D.C. What do you have a website, beloved? So I don't have a website. I'm using Airbnb for my tour right now. Um, okay. but the link I did put it in your comments, but anybody can DM me. I don't have anybody blocked. I actually did a space last week with like a whole bunch of stuff. I think like um Angel Reese, the what 13, the Chicago Sky, they're playing in DC Friday night. Um oh, there's a bunch of little stuff going on in the city. But yeah, get in contact with me. And yeah, my tour is my pin tweet. I got a few seats left open for Friday and some for Sunday. Nothing for Saturday, because I'm gonna be at the yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. yes, indeed. So y'all reach out to our sister, definitely reach out to her. And uh, where's that brother from D.C.? Is another brother who comes in here. Brother, if you're in here, the D.C. brother, raise your hand, brother, so I can have you get up and give your contact information, too, just in case the family need to reach out to you to get some information on how to move and shake around D.C. Um, Z-Rex, hop on, brother. Z-Rex. Want to unmute your mic? Yo. There you go. Yo, you hear me? Yes, sir. How are you, brother? I'm good. I'm good. How are you, man? How's the family? Yeah, the family is great. What city are you in, Z? I'm in Louisiana right now. Louisiana. Okay. Are from you from New York. Are you from New York? What you doing down in Louisiana? Yeah, you know how it is. After 9-11, you know how that is. The taxes went sky high, so we ended up here. Did you have relatives been... down there? Uh, a couple. Yeah, a couple, okay. a couple of relatives. That's that's kind of how we ended up out here. Uh, but I, I really wanted to say, man, hey, for the family, I know they got a lot of people that do YouTube and do, you know, add-ons and upload. We need a whole Tariq Nashi compilation when you just go in on these tethers, even the supremacists, man. I'll be dying laughing because I just you started. There's huh? a bunch of where people kind of chop my videos of me going in on man channels. i need to find that man they need a whole hour long full because i've been like i said i just started a new job and i have none but time so i have i've been going back on your old videos and man when i tell you it's hilarious when you just be putting up on the little uh tunes like the bugs they may have a, a little bug a, a fly in the background and you hey sir come on get your fly out <laughs> man that shit be killing me because i'm just and I see the people just staring at me, laughing at myself. And I'm like, hey, it's hilarious. But really, what I wanted to call, man, I wanted to call for is uh, I seen a video with, with, with uh, Mateo. That's, that's his son's name. That's not, yeah, my, my middle son. Yeah, I, I seen a video when, when uh, uh, recently when you said that he went to school and a friend of his did some bullshit. I'm not going to say what it is. You know what it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh I applaud you for how you handle that because they want to make sure that they keep their agendas and we don't get to defend ours. You know what I mean? Like if we right. had, if we want to make sure our kids and how we think are still straight, not saying is that not straight, but you know, it's still solid. We have a right to do so. But Absolutely. Uh, I heard you saying that your son is kind of like, uh, he's like a, like a lawyer type. He has a lot of questions. You know what I'm saying? My son is like that, too. I have a six-year-old. So my question is, what I really called for was, how do you move with teachers that try to... Because I know he's going to... Your son and mine, of course, is going to rehearse a lot of the topic and the talking points on hidden colors when they get older. So how do we how do we react to the teachers that try to push back on that type of conversation? And, you know, our kids, we... The older they get and the new generation, we can't hold their tongue. So all they can do is talk when they hear bullshit. So right. how do we react, you know, with, with the parents? Do, great, great question. What we got to do, we have to debrief them. We have to debrief these kids, man. So when they go to school, they'll have the right mindset. Because we can go holler at the teachers and check the teachers. But then it'll be another teacher. 
You understand? They'll keep replacing the teachers with the same damn agendas. You understand? So you better school them and get their minds right at home and prep them and let them know when they say this or if they say that, hey, don't you go for that now. Hey, that's cool. That ain't cool. You kind of let them know. You kind of let them know what the agenda might be. If they start talking like this, don't, don't, don't you let that seep in. There's a reason why they're telling you this, 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 this. You understand? And I, I break this stuff down to my kids about everything, about the bug breaking techniques, about the racial stuff he's going to have to look out for. You got to let them know. Hey, man, you can't do what your white buddies do. And my friend here, my, my, my son, he has a lot of white friends and Hispanic friends and black friends, too. And which is cool. That's cool. But if your non-black friends act a little mischievous at school, because they're always kind of goofing off, these little kids, I have to let them know, you can't do what they do. Because white kids don't really get in trouble. Black kids get overly punished. So always let them know, don't, if you see your white buddies do some stuff, don't you jump out the window with them because you're going to be treated differently. You better tell your kids shit like that because that's the truth. See, we, we try to play this game where we try to shield them from racism. No, you better tell your kids what's going on out here. So when they go in these classes and they try to psychologically buck break them, you know, they're going to be stuck out here. Your son going to come home with one of them Billy Porter dresses on. You dig? They will try it. So you better debrief your kids, man. And and school them at home and let them know what to look out for before you send them to school. It's real out here. Black study. Hop on. King Flex, what's going on, bro? My good brother. How are you, Black Study? Man, I just finished watching Microphone Check. I want to yeah. say thank you to the FBA family. Give us yeah. a Thank you to you as well. Great, great film. It's the truth. Man, I appreciate that, brother. What city are you in, by the way? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Shout out to Pittsburgh out there. The, um, the home of, um, well, this, the state of Phila, um, of cornbread. <laughs> yeah. State. Yeah. And yes, it's indeed. fish to say Pittsburgh. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And yes. now Russell Wilson's in town. So there yes. you go. My man, my man, I appreciate that, man. Everybody get Microphone Check at MicrophoneCheck.com. It's a phenomenal film, man. It's a phenomenal film. You guys are going to love it. it. Boy, the Tethers are having hissy fits over this film. The Derek Colognes, these people are just having nervous breakdowns. These people are broken because they can't get to lie no more. Well, they, they're still going to try to lie, but I'm telling you, Microphone Check shut down a lot of lies, man. It shut them lies down. Yeah. Well, listen, everybody, next week, well, not next week, hell, this weekend in a few days, is going down in Washington, D.C., the Rally for Reparations. Uh, we got so many phenomenal speakers. We got Big Daddy Kane performing. It's going to be a vibe Saturday. I cannot wait to be out there. I'm, I'm going to be in D.C. early. I'm going to be out there in a couple of days getting ready for it. Um, we're getting everything, the stages and uh, we got to get poured a pot. It's a whole bunch of stuff we got to do. A, a lot of the behind the scenes logistics that we got to get going out there. But I'll be out there in D.C. in a couple of days. So I cannot wait to be with the family and all that good stuff. Uh, but anyway, man, let me get up out of here. Y'all go to microphonecheck.com. Y'all holler at Amazon and let them know they better get microphone check up there. They better get some act right. Um Go to rally, the number four, reparations, rally4reparations.com, and I'll chop it up with you guys a little later. Puppy Akuta.